Well, good morning. And thankfully, that horrible wind and rain has gone, which means it's now time to fire up this absolute beaut of an engine. And firstly, as this is a raw water cooled engine, which means it takes water from the canal, sucks it in, pumps it around the engine, and then pumps it back out into the canal. I need to turn on the stopcock tap, which stops water from coming in. And followed by the exhaust. Next, we turn on the diesel. And check that there is enough fuel in the day tank. Which there is, is way over half there. Quite a big tank. Next up, we remove the air filter. Now we use this special tool to remove the wick holders. Most diesel engines use glow plugs to preheat the diesel and air mixture. Aslan actually has a hot wire in the intake manifold to do the same job. The engine in Gorse, however, uses a completely different method. Cotton wicks. These are made from a compressed cotton which is then coated at one end with saltpetre. An igniter is then inserted in the end of each holder and I'm going to place them to one side while I get on with the rest of the starting procedure. This engine doesn't have a traditional oil filter. It has a oil separator, which before you start it, you give it a twist. And inside is a scraper which removes all the gunk, or any gunk, that has gathered over the previous day's running. And I need to give a couple of pumps on the two grease nipples on the water pump. This is a calcium based proper uh, water pump grease. K99 uh, waterproof grease isn't really good for water pumps because when it gets warm, it just turns to an oil and runs out and then you get leaks. That's that done there. And we're now almost ready to start this engine. But before I can do that, firstly I need to crank the engine over manually, which with the igniters removed, and hence no engine compression, this is very easy to do. Doing this, pumps a bit of cooling water around the engine, as well as some lubricating oil, and primes the combustion chambers by saturating them with some diesel mist. After that, I'm now ready to begin starting the engine. Okay, as soon as these are lit and put back in, uh, you have a very, very small window of opportunity to start the engine, so I'm gonna have to go like the wind Quickly put that one in, and this one. Give them a tweak, just a little tweak, and we're ready to go. Air 
filter back on. This boat's a little bit more involved to navigate compared to Aslan. Uh, the controls are pretty similar. She has a speed wheel for the accelerator. Um, but the gears, instead of just the nice more so, is this authentic gear control, I suppose you could call it. It's a two speed forward and reverse. So I'm in forward first at the moment. Okay, let's uh, engage second and see what happens. Oh, wow. Oh, listen to that. That is the sound of the canals. I have, of course, been along the entire length of the Lancaster before. I'm going to be doing the stretch from here, outside the Tide Barn in Garstang, up to Lancaster itself. I reckon two days. Stop somewhere halfway, possibly at Goolgate. Got to take the cover off the little uh, auxiliary oil pressure gauge that's there. But I'm going to pull in down here in a minute and just check and top up the uh, the water tank. and steady.
One thing about this boat is it doesn't have a horn. It has a whistle. Which isn't the best solution because boaters are programmed to listen for horns or klaxons. If they hear a whistle, they'll just assume there's a game of football going on. Thankfully, as it's well out of boating season now, this canal is quite quiet today. Yeah, you have to keep switching between first and second. First is way too slow, and second is way too quick. And I don't want to go lowering the revs too much, because when you put it in second, the engine sort of slows right down. I don't want it cutting out. Heading for some open countryside now. I can relax a little bit then. Maybe this is the way to do it. Second gear, but much lower revs. A slightly more respectable speed when passing other boats. Blind bend. Oh well, no choice but to use the whistle. <whistles> yeah, sounds like a referee calling half time. Or a foul. Keep your eyes peeled, Kevin. Ah, oh, the responsibility. old stomping ground, Garstang Marina. And open countryside. What a beautiful boat. need to keep an eye out on this weather because it's forecast strong winds later and it was forecast thunderstorms but not now but it can change can't it Coming up here is a corner that I've not been looking forward to and it's probably the only corner because it's very blind but also very narrow under the water so you have to go in the middle otherwise you ground and I don't have a horn Wow! You need some arms turning this boat I'm reminded of the arm wrestling scene in the fly that took some real effort.
I would say that given Gorse's varied and at times uncertain history, in her current iteration she's been given a fabulous lease of life. Could have just rotted away on that slag heap. I might not go all the way to Gulgate because there's my favourite mooring, probably about two miles up the canal. And thinking about it, I'll probably stop there really. Don't want to chance my arm. Just pulled over and got the cover off that oil pressure gauge. I would like something like that on Aslan. It's just that extra peace of mind you can see what your oil pressure is doing. A nice healthy 30 psi. Of course, in this current form, was a labour of love of one man. His name was Fred. Sadly, he passed away a couple of years ago. And Gorse was sold to the present owner. I think Fred would have been delighted to have seen Gorse chugging along viewers enjoying her and being used for what she was built for. Excellent job Fred, wherever you are. As I say, Jeff Goldblum, arm wrestling, the fly. Warning, it's not pretty. I remember this place well. Yep, still keeping guard. Very lucky with the weather. In the forecast, even yesterday was wasn't too favourable, but I thought, well, I can't sit there forever down at the Tide Barn. I've got videos to make and viewers to please. And I don't want to speak too soon, but so far this is enchanting. Something I've often wondered with Aslan is, if the engine had to be taken out, how would you do it? Not that problem for Gorse, because this panel is bolted on, or is it riveted? Either way, it can be removed and the engine lifted out with a hoist.
Oh, right. Right, okay. Cheers. Oh, the wind got him and he tried to stop and he got blown over the other side, so I had to overtake on the left for a change. But he's just told me there's a couple of trees down a bit further up the canal. Coming in for a landing. The weather, one minute it looks like it's going to turn quite bad and the next it's beautiful again. Uh, but that's going to do me for today. Don't want to chance it, though uh, it's gone extremely well. And Gorse is an incredible boat. A bit hard on the old shoulder and elbows, but I'm sure you get used to that. As I was saying, there's a couple of trees down further up the canal. I'm subscribed to all the notifications and as soon as I get one that says the Lancaster is now clear at Goldgate. I can get going again, hopefully tomorrow morning. That'll do me today. Well, it's mission over. I'm afraid to say. The health freaks among you, switch off for five minutes. I'm moored illegally. Mm. Hey, how have they done that? Just spilt scalding hot coffee down my front. Tell you, it burns.